Hello and welcome back to the JPU Records Radio Show. Prepare yourselves for 60 minutes of the best Japanese rock, metal and everything else in between. Can you hear that? This is Ladybeard. Nope, not you Ladybeard, but we will be speaking to you later in the show. That is our brand new background music, but that's not all. We also got this. It's a JPU Records Radio Show. Kick ass. Music of Japan. Yes, got a jingle as well. Thank you very much to the mighty chip tune supremo Shirobon, who created both, especially for the JPU show. So thank you very much, man. Big appreciation, big love for you too. Coming up on the show today, we have our roundup of the Metal Matsuri Festival where 10 bands from Japan came down to London and performed for two days straight at the O2 Islington Academy. It was an event and a half. There, we met Ladybeard. He was the MC for the event. An all-round decent guy. We have a little chat with him about what it's like living in Japan, making the big move from Australia as a pro wrestler to uh, a singer in a tutu. We'll also have all the latest tour news from bands from Japan coming to the UK, including the one playing in the background right now. These guys will soon be celebrating their 30th anniversary, but 2019 might be, in fact, it is their biggest year to date. With this track going viral only four months ago, it's already had 2.5 million views on YouTube, it is the mighty Ningen Isu with Mujo no Scat, also known as Heartless Scat. Here we go.
that was one half of Heartless Scat. The full track is about eight and a half minutes long. Go check it out in full on YouTube. If you liked what you heard so far, I guarantee you won't be disappointed, especially because the bass player looks a bit like Uncle Festa from the Adams Family. Anyway, that was Ningen Isu. If you like them, you can check them out live. They're coming to London for the very first time on 21st of February, playing the Underworld in Camden. They'll also be playing the Lido in Berlin on the 19th of February. And uh, I'm sorry if I pronounce this wrong. Zach in Bochum in Germany on the 20th of February. February is going to be a busy month. It's also when Baby Metal return. They'll be kicking off the UK leg of their Metal Galaxy World Tour at Glasgow on 19th of February the Great Hall in Cardiff on 20th of February Manchester O2 Apollo 22nd of February and the Hammersmith Apollo on 23rd of February that is of course in celebration of the brand new album Metal Galaxy is just come out and I am so excited ahead of the album release Baby Metal dropped the track list on the track list was a number of featured artists including elisa from arch enemy and joachim from sabaton but the one that really hit me was from one of my favorite bands that's not from japan a band called polyphia they're an instrumental band tim henson and scott lepage the guitarist from the band feature on the baby metal track brand new day this is the track and i've been waiting for this for a while can't wait here it is Oh man, how good was that? That was Baby Metal featuring Tim Henson and Scott LePage from Polyphia. That's my first time listening to it and it hit every note that I wanted it to hit. Being a Polyphia fan, of course, I was waiting for the guitar solos to kick in. Of course, didn't disappoint. And the whole vibe of the song seems very different to the, the two Baby Metal albums before. Uh, it's really interesting to see how they, uh, they've progressed and keep changing and ain't afraid to change either. Man. I'm happy with that. So the album Metal Galaxy by Baby Metal is available now to buy, download, stream, get it on CD or vinyl ahead of their UK tour this coming February. And while you're at it, check out the JPU Records merch. Uh, We have three t-shirts designed by the same designer who does merch for Baby Metal and Bandmade, Isana Kagami. She's made three t-shirts that represent kawaii metal. The best of both worlds check them out on the jp records website the latest one the uh, the the metal witch will be available exclusively first at mcm london comic-con at uh, the end of october and then available on our website so get the pre-orders in and we'll make sure we get your size otherwise you're likely set out the last two designs from her we had sold out straight away Anyway, moving on it's my pleasure to introduce our very first guest on the jp records radio show He's an Australian wrestler living in Japan who was part of an idol group known as Lady Baby. Their debut song, Nippon Manju, had a huge amount of exposure. 28 million views on YouTube right now and was covered by loads of press. And uh, I'm not surprised if you listen to it. It was an interesting mix of idol and heavy metal vocals. Lady Beard's a big fan of metal, as we talk about in this interview. And if you haven't seen him yet, just open up Google right now, go to image search and put in Ladybeard Chun Li and you won't be disappointed. All I'm saying. Ladybeard's in a new group now called Deadlift Lolita. Their tagline is physically strongest idol group on earth. And uh, I'm not going to deny that. They're pretty hench. Between the two of them, their muscles are massive, man. So Ladybeard's in the group with Rei Kasaiki, who's also a pro wrestler and a bodybuilder. They were both guests at Hyper Japan last year in London and Lady Beard was invited to the Metal Matsuri Festival recently in London and that's where this interview took place. We got there early in the morning while the bands were sound checking so you can hear a bit of noise in the background. Might be unlucky Orpheus I think setting up on stage and we were just uh, conducting the interview in the backstage area which is pretty much just uh, a passageway so there's a bit of interference now and again with uh, sound tech and staff coming in and out but hopefully it's not too bad anyway here we go it's a jdu records radio 
I'm here today with the mighty Lady Beard. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, JP U Records podcast. Hello. Hello, United Kingdom. Hello. Hello, others listening in all places around the earth. Hello. Etc. Etc. Et so this is the second day of Metal Matsuri. That's right. So day number two, Metal Matsuri. How's it been going so far for you? Yeah, very good, mate. So we had the VIP pre-party um, on uh, Thursday night, and then yesterday was day number one. So everyone seems extremely happy so far. I tell you what, all the people overseas who support um, Japanese music and Japanese culture in general are really a fantastic bunch. You know, they're not, you know, they're not coming out on a Saturday to get wasted and have a fight. They're coming out to you know have a, a communal event and have a great time which is yeah. really fantastic so what's been your highlight so far I guess meeting the fans well, I mean the fans is always pretty much the highlight you know because when you're an entertainer you don't have any gauge of whether you actually create any value in the world unless someone comes and actually says hey good job you know so right. so if we the fans is always good um but I mean, you know, the whole thing's been fantastic. Being in the O2 Academy is wonderful. This is a historic right. building. Nice Just venue. Looking around the place at all the various bands who've signed the walls and stuff. That's actually pretty badass for me. Finding birds. Oh my God, it's uh, Max Cavalera. Oh my God, it's Pennywise. You left any stuff. signatures up there for yourself? I haven't yet, but I'm going to today. Got to get on support. that. It's important. Of course, leave your I've mark. I've noticed none down here, so I figured this is the place for it because <laughs> I stand out. Yep, very true. Right? So uh, I was going to ask, you've, you're an Australian. Yep. In a tutu? Yes. In Japan? Yes. How did that happen? Um, the very brief history of Lady Beard was I was trained as an actor and a stuntman in Australia. Uh, no work there, so I moved to Hong Kong. Mm. Um, got work there. 2008 financial crisis wiped all the work out. Right. And I said I, I had to do something then because everything in my life was gone. So I said, I know how to fix all my problems. I'll become a cross-dressing pro wrestler and heavy metal singer. So there you go. I started this uh, Lady Beard project, started singing metal covers of Cantonese pop songs. Did a tour to Japan. It went very, very well. So I said, I'll move there. Went to Japan. It blew up. Now here we are. Wow. Yeah. So in Japan, they knew the Cantonese pop songs? No, no, no. I started saying Japanese songs when I went to Japan. Uh, yeah, yeah. So how did China go? Is it quite a different kind of... Oh, it's such a different market. It's every time I go into a new market, um, I kind of have to figure out what I'm going to do in that market. Because a bearded white man in a dress means something different in every place. Right. Yeah. Oh, but I guess in Japan, it's accepted. In Japan, it's... Woo! Let's, begin. <laughs> Let's have a good time with the bearded white man in a dress. The screaming, dancing bearded white man. And have you found the reception of you overseas? Like here, for example, in America, have they been accepting of the... Yeah, no, yeah, it's surprisingly so, to be honest, surprisingly so. I um, I think it's because I went to Japan and I started this career in Japan. It's a career I don't think I could reasonably have really started in the Western world and kind of got proper traction the way I could in Japan, you know. It's, uh, I think, um... In Japan, I've got the like the crazy foreigner advantage, but then I yeah. think for the sake of other Westerners, they kind of see me and they say, did you say that guy moved to Japan and did a cross-dressing pro wrestling heavy metal thing? And that made him famous in Japan. So everyone has this thing of, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. You know? So, yeah. So it means it's everything's sort of secular. Right. Yeah. And, and the whole pro wrestling thing, is that something you're still involved in? Yeah, I'm still wrestling. I wrestled the day before I came here. Whoa. Yeah, I was all bruised up on the plane. <laughs> For oh, fun? Or are you actually professional? No, or? professional wrestling oh, in wow. Japan. I wasn't aware. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you're, of course, in great shape. Uh, Thank what's you, your kind of routine? Do you have a daily workout? Um, there's a... Uh, a whole lot there's a lot that goes into being Lady Beard there's a imagine. lot of there's a lot of working out you know today we have um, we're in this four floor venue with no elevator so there's a lot of up and down the stairs which is happening today yeah. by the time you leave here today you're going to have a fantastic ass your ass is going to be a thing of beauty nice you'll be able to take a photo and frame it that is a very nice it. ass so oh you are, say the right things thank yeah, you sir course. thank you very much now let me I'm going to flip the switch how uh -oh. did you get involved in Japanese music oh no um, it happened a long time ago yep. kind of doing what I'm doing right now with you. Okay. I used to work for a magazine. Well, yeah, I worked for a magazine writing about Japanese music, mm. but at first it was anime. Okay. And I was kind of bored of writing the same thing about anime day after day, and I wanted to try and change. What's the same thing you write about anime day after day? Reviews nonstop. It's right. kind of the same stuff getting released. There's only so much you can talk about. Yeah, oh, yeah. Naruto series seven episodes, whatever. I'm like, oh, it's More just... of the same story. Yeah, and Naruto's yeah, still going for it. He's still trying his best, and it's yeah, fun, but it wasn't really what, what I was into. Right. And at the same time, the band called Durin Gray had come over yes. to England for the first time. Yes. Actually, 
you hear? I think they were the first Japanese band I ever heard. Yeah? I think so. They're wicked, man. Yeah, they're great. I wasn't too sure about them at first. I heard this music and I was a bit like, it's a bit scary. I see how it goes. Yeah. Not my kind of thing. I saw them here. They were amazing. Great, really? And there was a queue outside. The queue was in, well, people were queuing for two days. Really? You're and kidding? Like, There's no media covering oh, it. And shit. I was like, man, people actually care about this. I had no idea this even existed. Right. So after that, I was like, right, I'm going to start writing about these bands. I've got a magazine that's kind of crossing over with the same kind of audience. So right. I started, I asked the editor, can I start writing about these bands? So I did, and I started interviewing them. Right. So yeah, the next one who came over was Antic Cafe, the visual case. Oh, one. yes. Yeah. Oh, so yes. I interviewed them, and it just blew up. Loads wow. of reactions from fans and stuff. Really? And so the magazine editor was like, right, every issue now, we want you to interview different bands. So really? I started doing that. And I started doing club nights and DJing Japanese music, right. started inviting bands over. Right. Then I made a record label, and then that's th- where I am now. I think there is a particular fascination with uh, Japan and its various uh, varieties of pop culture in the Western world. Yes. And I find, especially within the metal community, because it's, uh, it's, uh, there are so many Western bands who tour to Japan mm. and come back with reports of, oh, the Japanese are so fantastic, they're a great audience, they're so respectful and so forth. Yeah. Um, and then I think uh, Japanese metal is kind of the same but different yes. in a certain sense. That's, That's right. I got into it. That, right, I, right. I loved metal as a kid. New, new metal was like my thing. Yes, good. And it kind of died here. It's not cool anymore. Yeah. But in Japan, it seems to be blossoming. They're changing it into like new metal but Japanese style metal right. at the same time for me it's like yes it's still alive right so. great well, one of the wonderful things Japan seems to do is attempt to take everything and make metal part of it so like idol music which is basically yeah. little girl pop music hmm. now metal's part of that visual key which is basically glam rock and now metal's in that you know so they right. you know yeah, hip hop had metal I got to happen to here as well a long time ago but you know so everything has metal thrown into it in Japan yeah. to a certain extent which is fantastic it's fantastic yeah, and it's I great fun I think the music there see, for me is an outside who just comes on holiday and checking mm. stuff out. The live houses, the small ones, the bands there, every single one, it doesn't <laughs> matter if there's no one in the audience, they're still amazing. Yeah, they're still, that's right. They're still and in fantastic. tune, where here you go to like, they're usually a bit ropey, <laughs> a bit drunk on stage. So yeah, just love seeing the passion. The uh, there. Yeah, there's a, there's a very wide variety of, um, so what's so fascinating is like in so Tokyo by itself, there's mm. just thousands of live houses. So every night of the week, you can go and see a show and it like the variety available goes yeah. from like top notch, super polished performances to the kind of thing you see here, just three drunk dudes just kind of you know yeah. missing the guitar when they try and strum it things just like this feedback coming every right so but the variety really is fantastic and mm. uh, the Japanese are really they okay so uh, I think it can be agreed that um, the Japanese brain seems to operate in a, on a different frequency from the western brain right. in most capacities so the way they approach a performance is oftentimes quite different yeah well, how would you is. say well okay so here's an example mm. um, Shiori and I went to an idol show recently because we knew an idol on stage we wanted to see them and then the act that comes on after um, this idol it, well, this was the strangest thing I've ever seen in my life there was this one little girl in an idol skirt yeah. and then a man covered head to toe in like bright blue and pink unicorn Harajuku it was so strange what? he's like in this un- this furry unicorn costume okay and she's singing and he's like doing this kind of like trancey you know like a hippie festival dance thing with light sticks and whatnot while she's singing whoa there's a man sitting down next to them wearing a horse face mask playing what was he playing playing pots with as drums Amazing. or something and then behind everyone behind everyone there was a, this some girl and some guy who were dancing in inverted colors, but their dancing was like just just stepping from side to side. This was it. Shuffle. But we we're, we're totally blank faces. Amazing. We were like, what the? Oh, it was so transfixing. I was like, what am I? I don't know what, what I'm watching. What the? What is this? I wasn't sure if it was terrible or brilliant. You know, there's there's so much of that in Japan. When I'm yeah. like, is this amazing or is this awful? I love this idea that Lady Beard finds something in Japan is strange. That's just, for me, hilarious. Uh, That's great. Uh, yeah, the irony. Yeah, I yeah. miss that place. I really want to go back to it. Yeah, but come on back. Come on back. How's your Japanese? Terrible. Okay. I, I gave up a little while ago. Did I, you? Yeah, I was working with um, 
a big band and the manager of the band is American okay. and he was like well big band in Japan he was like don't speak Japanese if you speak Japanese over there in business environments or with, col- with like clients they won't kind of respect you it has to be perfect or not so uh, it kind I of discouraged me a, a bit so I, I would like, agree with that to a certain I'll just extent. stop then because my, my Japanese is terrible level right. so right. I thought okay just step back a bit use it for pleasantries and yeah. then when you're doing serious dealings yeah get a translator in and yeah. get all that done yeah that's definitely the best way to do it yeah how have you found living there is it a place you can find <sighs> um you know there's lots and lots of really wonderful things about it it's so vastly different from everywhere else in the whole world that that mm. presents a you know a set of challenges that you need to solve yeah um did you have any culture shock um I, it's culture shock is kind of the wrong word like I'd already moved away from Australia so I'd been through that process already so I kind of to a certain degree I knew what I was getting into in that in that respect it's more about once you start doing things there Mm. and you realise the difference in the thought pattern and the attitude towards things uh, particularly social interactions and whatnot. Mm. Uh, that's what is because because here's the thing right we don't wake up in the morning thinking about our culture you know you don't wake up and think here's another day of being an Englishman you're just going and doing life right so the Japanese are the same so when you are just doing life and they're just doing life and those Mm. two ways are different but then they have to interact you just look at each other going what are you what what's wrong with you you know like so that's but it's only when you start doing things there and having to have me meaningful interactions with people that those things kind of present themselves Mm. um there's a thing that happens in Japan where, uh, so in the language, they'll take English words and words from other languages mm-hmm. and they'll use them in Japanese, but they'll change the meaning. Oh. So you can imagine the, the fun that this leads to, yes. right? When you're saying they're saying like, no, he's the producer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so why is he not doing the job of the producer? He's like, uh, no, he is. Well, no, he isn't because he hasn't produced anything, you know? Like it's, so there's a lot of kind of, you know, um, you, lots of things get lots of miscommunication yeah. and there are lots of things when you're just expressing yourself on whatever and that that's offensive from the other person's perspective yeah I found kind of that a lot lots just, of that. just trying to be honest and telling them uh, a lot, I get a lot of bands asking me especially when we go out drinking after like how was the show and sometimes it's not been great right. but I've been told you have to tell them it was great but I'd rather tell them where the problems were so that's a western that's a western attitude yeah. right? um, it's uh, in Japan sure I can chime in this stuff if you want to you need to have the special relationship with them so that you've got enough rapport to be able to talk to them honestly but also you can't tell me like you can't say things directly in Japanese you Mm. need to circle around the point so yeah so Japanese is the language is what you call high context so communication happens indirectly and there's a lot of reading between lines yeah so if I want you to you know get me a drink I will say this is the decor in this building nice and then you're supposed to figure out from my decor comment that you want me to buy you a drink yeah right that, that, oh, I'm being silly I'm exaggerating yeah, but, but you know what I'm saying like yeah. if I want you to buy me a drink I'll be like oh so thirsty I haven't had a drink all day instead of just saying hey can you buy me a drink you yeah know? yeah I see right so there's but that's you know one example it's it's yeah. all, everything that happens there, you know. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Oh, thank you very much for your time. No, oh, my oh, pleasure, sir. Actually, before we finish, we haven't spoken about metal very much. We talked no, about metal. No, let's talk about some metal. Yeah, yeah nice. <laughs> <laughs> good times. So, you come from a metal background? Did, did yeah, you, mate. You grew up on metal. Grew or? up on metal. Uh, I got into metal when I was a teenager, and so forth. We started in punk rock, then went into metal yeah. from there. Yeah, good fun. What was your first CD? Let me ask. It was the soundtrack to the movie Mortal Kombat. Wow. Ah, uh, you remember that? That was quality. <laughs> 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 yes. Oh God, no! it was awesome, right? But that had like napalm death and whatnot at the time I wasn't into metalhead I'm like with the metal I was like part of this nonsense music right um, what a soundtrack man it was a good time wasn't it yeah. but then I went through like the pop punk phase when Blink 182 popped I went through all that kind of thing and then yeah. that kind of led me into metal from there nice. so yeah so I was uh, big on a lot of metal when I was younger like I'm a huge Slipknot fan I went through a big Marilyn Manson phase Wednesday 13 is my favourite artist uh, one of my very favourite artists oh, nice. um, he was a big inspiration for the cross dressing and so forth Wednesday oh, 13 right. yeah yeah, yeah part of it um they were they played recently in london last did they wednesday a static x they're doing a cover oh, for no. the singer and they were performing secretly no yeah, like, wednesday like last week yeah no that would have been awesome he was uh, they're wearing masks they didn't know who they were oh and they announced God. afterwards Oh my god, that's incredible! Hey, so they were playing with Static X. Yeah, because the singers, of course, He's dead. Yeah, so they had different people. Oh my god! 
Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah, they're doing the the tour, playing all of Wisconsin Death Trip again, yeah. aren't they? Oh my god, that would have been awesome. I'm One of the guys yesterday went. He was telling me about it. So really? Like, well, sounds oh good. My god, that sounds fantastic. Um, Static X, I was a huge fan of them. They were wonderful. Uh, but yeah, but then when I went to Hong Kong, I was like, I want to hear the Cantonese metal, and there wasn't very much of it. Mm. Uh, this is the other thing. I love metal covers of pop songs. That's kind of a yeah. really. I've always found it just hilarious because pop songs, you hear them all the time, whether you want to or not. They're just they're around you in cafes and in shops, this kind yeah. of thing. So they're kind of inescapable, which means they're in your brain, regardless of how you feel about it. Mm. So when you, I think, when you hear a metal cover of a pop song. That is uh, beautifully joyful and hilarious in the fact that something you're always used to hearing as like, ooh, is then subverted to, yeah. And I yep. think there's something really beautiful about that. So, um, uh, yeah, so I've always loved metal covers of pop songs. When I got to Hong Kong, I found no one was doing them in Cantonese. I got there, and I'm like, these pops, because I started listening to Cantonese pop for the sake of learning Cantonese. And I'm like, yeah. these songs are so catchy. Where are the metal covers? And there mm. were none. And so then I said, someone should make metal covers of this. And then three years yeah. later, I'm like, I guess that person's me. So, <laughs> Is there much of a metal scene in, in uh, China? No, uh, I think in Ch- in mainland China. Now, well, here's the thing. China has well, 1.3 billion people. Yeah, right. So even if 1% of the population likes something, still that's massive. still like the population of the UK. You know, it's massive. So um, uh, the metal scene, from what I understand, is in isolated areas. So okay. it's more down in the south like near Guangzhou and whatnot in Shenzhen. Uh, that's my understanding. I haven't done much metal stuff in mainland China. So how about mm. you and Japanese metal? Is there any bands you, when you've been over there, you've checked out and you really enjoyed? I originally, so I listened to Dyer and Grey a long time ago as well, and I thought they were fantastic. And then I got into the bands that kind of got more, here's the problem, right? If you can't read Japanese, it's very hard to find them. Yes. So even if you can speak, if you can't read them right, it's very hard to search I'm things, to find right? find the CDs and book off. I'm like, oh, where do I go? Yeah, that's right, exactly. So. That's very challenging. And so I found the ones that kind of had Western exposure to a certain extent, like Maximum the Hormone and mm. like uh, this band Dazzle Vision. Do you know them? They were wicked. They were great, yeah, weren't they? The female vocalist. That's right. Yeah, That's great. right. I played them at the VIP party on Thursday. It's a nice. shame they broke up. It really is. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So I listened to a lot of them. And then I got into a lot of the Japanese metalcore. Um, bless the YouTube sidebar. That thing. Yes, <laughs> recommended. We've all learnt a lot of bands off the YouTube sidebar. So I got into a lot of um, like the Japanese metalcore when I was living in Hong Kong. Mm. So bands like uh, like Crystal Lake yes. um, Her Name of Blood uh, there's a band called Angry Frog Rebirth I think. No, no. you know them? Yeah, I've seen them <laughs> they were a good time yeah yeah, yeah. No. so I got into these bands oh and of course Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas of course, I think yeah. fantastic and Bloodstained Child who we have upstairs today one of my favourites me too I've been listening to them for like 12 years they were my MySpace song back in MySpace really? Day. you're yeah. kidding they were my weightlifting song back in Hong Kong <laughs> ah okay, you motivated? Yeah, they were fantastic I'm so excited to see them today me too it's been 12 years wait. coming that's going to be great yeah, so I got into all this kind of stuff. Then when I moved to Japan, it was kind of like, oh God, like the floodgates open to what there really is once you're there and you can see it yeah. like from the inside, you know? Um, there's this band which has got a lot of traction all over the world recently um, called um, Devaloof. You hear about yes, that? Yes, they are uh, the videos too. They're hardcore, it's, it's man. Awful, aren't they? Disgusting. They're killing it. It's fantastic. Yeah. And have you seen um, Inception of Genocide? Haven't Do you know heard them? Of that Check one. them out. They're freaking badass. Inception as well. of Genocide. Yeah, which is not a great name. Okay. <laughs> not a, yeah, I guess. It's not a great name. But Inception of Genocide. There, I've been listening to them name. recently. They're a Japanese metalcore. Sorry, deathcore band. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so have a listen to them. They're insane. Yeah, do you have a song you recommend from them? I uh, no, because I can't remember the names of their songs off the top of my head. But look, there's only one exception of genocide band, so yeah, put that in. That's what you're gonna find. Yeah. Um, but what is fantastic about Japan is there's there's really an embracing of the underground in Japan. Mm. So it means that there'll be a big once you can find it big black metal scene big deathcore scene yeah. big you know prog scene or whatever you're into right mm-hmm. um, and as we said before the Japanese approach things in a different way from everyone else so we go to one of their shows you're like oh god what's gonna happen and it's, yeah. there's always a surprise to be had I love the uh, the rock nights the Geki Rock oh Geki Rock yeah 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 so fun great fun everyone do like circle pits and high fiving as they're running yeah around. yeah yeah it, good fun right that's one of my favourite experiences Geki Rock um, that's right and the Geki Rock they, they were somehow involved in the launch of Crossfaith from what I understand there was oh, yeah. that one video company that was making all the metalcore bands all of them yeah all their videos Vision eh? or something maybe yes sure. I can't remember but I met those guys at a Get Here Rock Night yeah. maybe that's what I'm getting confused with maybe there was nothing to do with the launch of Crossfaith <laughs> and that's so well, just they made a video they seem to be like a clothing brand that seems to be connected with it yeah like they've got their shop in Shibuya that's right yeah that's right 
I should know more about that. <laughs> the previous lady, if you're doing this interview, <laughs> pretending he knows things, I'm just winging it. Just winging it. <laughs> I think we all are. Right. In, in life, we're all just winging it. Hope in this great stage dive of life, we're all just hoping that we'll, we'll bounce off enough hands before we hit the ground that Sorry. the impact will be cushioned. Yes. And on that note, it's been a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you, mate. Good nice one, man. Thank you. That was Lady Beard speaking to the JPU Records radio show at Metal Matsuri in London. What a nice guy. And after that, I think no better song than something from Bloodstained Child. This is Sophia. A tune that was Sophia by Bloodstained Child. Definitely one of my highlights from the Metal Matsuri Festival. I don't know why I keep saying Metal Matsuri Festival. Matsuri is festival in Japanese. Festival, festival. Anyway, fantastic band. Watching the crowd go absolutely nuts to them was uh, amazing. And I've been waiting to see them since I was a teenager. So, so happy to see them in London. Speaking of amazing bands, one we mentioned in the last show was Survive Said the Prophet. Well, they only just played Manchester and London literally weeks ago, and they're already back in the UK for a full UK tour this November. They'll be supporting as it is in uh, one, two, three, four, five, six shows across the UK, starting off in Southampton at Joiners, which is already sold out on the 9th of November. They'll then be playing the Rescue Rooms in Nottingham, 10th of November, King Tut's in Glasgow on the 12th, Manchester Academy 3 on the 13th, Key Club in Leeds on the 14th, and London Dingwalls on the 15th, which is also already sold out. So if you missed them, yeah, missed them. So better grab some tickets while you still can. In the meantime, here is Found and Lost by Survive Said the Prophet. Check it out.
What a tune. That was Survive Said the Prophet with Found and Lost. Now, there's nothing wrong with finding great music from anime. A lot of bands are discovered that way. I'm not going to lie. Found so many that way too. One of those being Asian Kung Fu Generation. The legends are coming back to the UK soon. They'll be playing at uh, London Dingwalls on 29th of November after hitting Paris's backstage by the mill the day before. I think it will be their third time in the UK and uh, I think that deserves a song. So this is After Dark. This was taken from their fifth album, World, 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 and was the seventh uh, opening theme to anime Bleach. It's available now on the album Best Hit AKG, which is available from JP Records on CD and also to download, but not to stream because they don't give us streaming rights. I don't know why they would do that. And it's not available on Apple Music or nothing uh, from Best Hit AKG, but I think it might be available on World, World, World. I'm not too sure because don't handle the rights to that. Anyway, After Dark, check it out. was Asian Kung Fu Generation with After Dark. They'll be playing Dingwalls in London on 29th of November, so make sure you get a ticket and see them then. Uh, speaking of anime music, do you remember the series FLCL? When I was in school, I loved this show, especially because of the music. The music was killer. Well, Anime Limited is going to start their first music range, and the FLCL soundtrack is the first addition to uh, beyond the range it's going to be uh two vinyls 12 inches limited edition comes with gatefold packaging and liner notes including lyrics and a bonus square print of the artwork used on the front of the package uh on that track 
on that edition is the fantastic song by the pillows great punk band from japan called ride on shooting star so of course i'm gonna have to play that song here it is Ride on the shooting star by the pillows. So far today, we've covered plenty of anime music. How about some video games? Near Automata in concert is coming to Europe and North America next year. After four set out shows in Tokyo in 2018, the musical experience is coming to London, Chicago, and Bangkok. All dates will be performed by full symphony orchestra and chorus and will feature the vocal stylings of renowned soloist Emmy Evans under the direction of Grammy Award winner and acclaimed conductor Arnie Roth. Near Automata director Yoko Taro and composer Kaichi Okabe will also be there and have created HD video projections especially for these concerts, which will be projected onto giant screens throughout the performances and accompanied with over 100 musicians on stage. Tickets are on sale now. Chicago will take place on 24th of January at the Rosemont Theatre. London has already sold out one of the showings. It will be at the Royal Festival Hall on 2nd of February. The 3pm showing is already sold out. The same day, 8pm showing is still available. Then on 15th of February, it will play in Bangkok at the Prince Mahodal Hall at 4pm, as well as the following day at the same location. Tickets for Bangkok will go on sale soon. Tickets for the remaining London show are on sale now, priced from £37 and go up to £120 for the VIP package. VIP tickets include premium seat in for the performance and a post-concert meet and greet with the composer Keiichi Okabe and director Yoko Taro, vocal soloist Emmy Evans and conductor Arnie Roth. VIP ticket holders can have one item autographed and have the opportunity to have one photo with Mr. Okabe, Mr. Taro, Miss Evans and Mr. Ruff. There you go, time for some near watermark tunes. I think I say tunes, there'll be one. Here we go. This is End of the Unknown.
that was ends of the unknown from the near automata soundtrack if you like that go see in concert it will be amazing well that brings us to the end of another episode of the jpu records radio show hope you enjoyed it coming up next week we have interviews with the organizers of metal matsuri talking about their involvement with japan how they got the idea to create the biggest metal festival for japan outside of asia and how one band kickstarted their obsession with the country. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed it so far and stick with us. If you like what you hear, drop us a like on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, we're on it all. All right, guys, thank you very much and see you next time. Don't forget, come say hello to us at MCM Comic Con if you're around, we'll be there. Just look for the JPU Records booth in the North Hall. All right, that's your lot. I've been Tom Smith, see you next time. It's a JPU Records Radio Show. Kick ass. Music of Japan.